I can see your screen, so all good there, Randy. Super. All right, today we're going to talk about the savings and debt um, template that we just released. Uh, this piggybacks on, well, there's a piggy right here, but there, this piggybacks on the, the savings budget, which we also just released and demoed, um, I think, two weeks ago. Um, so this is content you can find in the community that will help you understand how to use this template, but we'll go through a live demo right now. Um, so right here, what I have, we have basically three layers here. The first layer is the foundation template, which many of you start your um, sort of tiller experience with. On top of that, we have installed the savings budget, which looks like this. Again, it's an alternative to the monthly and yearly budgets that come with the foundations template. And uh, again, if you want to learn more about how to get this installed and how to use it, we did the webinar um, two weeks ago, and there's also content in the community. Um, so in this in this uh, demonstration, what we're going to start with is uh, we're going to create some longer term savings goals within our category sheet. In the in the last webinar, we talked about how you could use uh, basically set up these savings rollover category or set your saving your categories as savings rollover categories um, to use them with a new budget. Today, what we're going to do is work specifically not with kind of everyday month to month categories, but with longer term goals. And so I'm going to start by adding um, four new long term goals into my category sheet um, to create some savings goals. So we'll start with an Apple Watch uh, six. Um, we want to. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go this way first. So we're gonna call this a long-term goal. The, the wording here is just um, helpful in terms of organizing your savings budget sheet. It's not really required that uh, it follows any specific format. You can use whatever you'd like. This will be an expense, um, and we're gonna set this up as, uh, a saving, as, as tracked uh, as a savings um, category. We'll add three more goals. We're gonna do a rainy uh, day fund a uh, rafting trip that we want to save money for next year, and also a badly needed sewer repair. Um, and I'm going to just copy these uh, values here down here because these are all going to be configured the same. Um, now, right now, if you jump over to your savings budget, you won't see these new uh, categories at the bottom. The reason is to show up on your savings budget a category needs either actuals within the selected period, you can see here it's June 2020, or it needs a budget for that period, even if the budget's zero. So now I'm going to add in a zero budget to each of these, just so that we can see it on our, our uh, dashboard. And you can see here this filled over this way, what's going on there. Most of the foundation template category sheets include this very simple formula that basically equals the month before. So effectively, if you put and then this one equals the one before. So whenever you make a change like here, you'll see that kind of cascade out to the right. Um, so again, we're going to start these at zero. All right, so now let's go to our savings budget. We should see these new long-term goals. Um, they're down at the bottom, and you can see that they're uh, grouped under the group heading that we created. If we look back, we're in June right now. We have three months of history in this demonstration sheet. Um, I guess it's four because we're on October 1st today. Um, and so sometimes a good way to start with funding your savings goals is to look at if you have unallocated uh, income. Um, and so in this budget, you can see here that our income rolls up to $3,000, um, our income budget, but our expense budget is only $2,400. So there we see uh, $600 of uh, budget available to fund a, a goal. Um, and so we're going to allocate that across these categories. Um, if, you're, if, if you saw the last uh, demonstration, you'll know that um, this adjust column allows us to make um, changes. And by setting this either to budget or savings, we can say where we want to make the adjustments, um, either to this budget category or column or the savings column. So let's put $600 of a budget into these goals and try and get this um, expense budget, or sorry, income budget total to equal our um, expense budget total. So I'm going to fund. Uh, the Apple Watch with $100 a month. I'm gonna fund this, uh, the rafting trip with 200 a month, uh, the rainy day fund with 50, and the sewer repair with 250. Um, and you can see as I make these changes, um, they're kind of provisional right now, they're not written into the budget, they're just in this column here, but they do show over here, and you can also see now that this, these two numbers now match up. Effectively, these provisional um, budget adjustments now are reflected in my um, totals for this month. To, to write these changes into my sheet, I need to use um, the Tiller Money Labs add-on. Um, and when you install the savings budget, there will be a new um, menu item in your tools 
menu here called Savings Budget. This will only show if you have this solution installed um, that will allow you to basically take all your adjustments and write them permanently into the budget. So I'm going to press the, uh, since I do have these uh, pending um, uh, adjustments, I'm going to press the Update Budget button. And you'll see now these will disappear here, but they'll become permanent here. And if I look back at my Categories sheet here, you can see that these changes, these were zero before, but those changes have been written here. And because we have these equals formulas over this way, they're reflected out into future periods. Um, so let's look at one other thing here. You can see because this is our first, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around so much, but uh, you can see here's our categories uh, sheet and with our periods across the top, the first period is June. Because the, we're in our first period here, all of our budgets start at zero, but as we go out into the future, July, you'll see basically these values here that were left over at the end of June bump up into the savings for the following month. So I'm gonna go to July here. You'll see these values push over this way. If we go to the next month, again, with no actuals, um, you'll see it double. So effectively every month, the, the leftover money here of the savings from the previous month with the budget of the current month uh, basically, all that money is going to roll over into here. And if we go all the way out to our current month, October, um, what we're going to see is uh, is quite a bit of money. There's $2,400 here um, uh, of, of available savings. And then if we include October's uh, budget right here, there's another $600. So effectively, um, in October now, we have $3,000 of available uh, savings. And now the problem that we're trying to solve with this uh, savings and debt template is right now um, we're doing a great job at accumulating these uh, these goals, or, or sorry, these savings, but we don't really know how to manage this to a plan. And the savings and debt template will help you do that. It's, it's kind of like saying uh, here we have the accelerator pedal on the car, um, but we can't really go somewhere until we have a map and a steering wheel. Um, so that's what we're going to add into the sheet. Uh, so let's go and use the Tiller Money Labs add-on um, to install the new the new template. Um, so we're going to go to the Add Solution here um, and find it down here. Currently, we're calling it a prototype because it's very new um, and we're kind of improving it every day, honestly. Um, so we're going to add this to the spreadsheet. Um, and now you can see the new template. One thing to know, as Heather mentioned, one thing to know about this new template is that it basically has two halves that work sort of independently. Um, over here we have the savings goals, but if I slide over to the right on my screen here, there's also this debt payoff section, which we're not gonna talk about today. Um, today we'll just use this half. Um, so what let's do is let's um, get all of our, uh, oh, sorry, I meant to say that this, um, this this, the savings budget works around a selected period. You can look at a past period, a future period. The savings and debt template works on the current period. So right now you can see here that this is uh, reflecting October 2020. So let's make so let's track, begin to track our long-term goals here by putting them into this dashboard. Um, so let's get the Apple Watch. As you can see here, when we add in the savings goal, it looks in the current period for what's available and also what's budgeted. These numbers will match what's here. So here we have available for Apple Watch. Here is $500. Um, and what is uh, budget is $100. And so that that information will be pulled in as we add these, um, these, uh, these categories. Um, let's repair. Um, and you can, so, so now you can see we have all of our categories in here. We've pulled in available and, and budgeted. And now let's set some goals. What do we actually need to accomplish our goals? Um, how much money do we need to accomplish our goals with these categories? Uh, so Apple Watch, let's say with tax, that's $450. Rafting trip, $2,500. Rainy day fund, $1,000. And uh, sewer repair, $1,500. Um, and so now you can see this more information is now coming to this dashboard now that we've configured these goals. We can now see um, not just what's available, but also how much money we need to to um, to, to reach the goal. Here we have a $1,000 available. We need another $1,500 to get to $2,500. We can see a progress bar. We can go a step further here by actually saying when we want this goal funded by. Um, so with the wrapping trip, we want to be able to do that next summer. So I'm going to put in June 2021. 
uh, the rainy day fund we'd like to have that online um, in February and um, the sewer repair since it's getting pretty stinky here we're gonna do that sooner um, now here with some other interesting things have happened now we can actually look and see how many periods between the current period and uh, and when we want our goal funded um, and also we we get a required budget calculation that helps us understand how much money we need each month to reach um, to reach this goal by this date and you'll also notice that this this one uh, on our rainy day fund is highlighted because the required budget is $160 to get that funded by February but we only have $50 uh, sorry that's each month um, but we only have $50 going into that bucket each month um, there was something I wanted to mention here but I just can't quite remember it yet um, I will, the savings uh, account check at the top because I want to know about that one at the end Heather okay uh, I just uh, all right well hopefully I'll remember at some point here but one thing we can do here is we can notice that our Apple uh, watch is overfunded so here we have five hundred dollars available in October and we only need 450 and we can see here that this category here needs a little help um, so let's start by putting fifty dollars of this uh, money that we have saved in our savings budget into um, into this other rainy day fund uh, so we can do that very easily here we're going to set this we want the adjustment to actually modify not our budget right now we want to actually move money in savings and we're going to do it in a net net uh, zero way so we're going to take 50 so right now this is at 500 we're going to say take $50 from here it drops down to 450 and on a rainy day we're going to put $50 there and um, you can see that bumps it up a little bit this is set to savings I can either go in this tools menu and do um, the workflow I showed you last time or we can use a little shortcut that lives right here update savings budget um, this does the same thing but it, it's sometimes easier to get here than opening the add-on in the sidebar so I'm gonna press that and you'll see basically these changes um, be written and now if I jump over here you can see this is kind of funded spot-on and we've had a little help over here um, the next thing I want to show you is uh, this looks a tiny bit different than last time I did this um, the next thing I want to show you is that we have uh, we have basically a hundred dollars a month shortfall here, um, and uh, sorry, I'm just trying to do a little math. My something's not quite right. Let me just um, let me just uh, take this down to two thousand so we can make this work. Um, oh, sorry. Here's the thing I want to show you earlier. One way to fix this shortfall is to push our goal out. So you can see that this calculation is, is driven by this. If we said we actually don't need this rainy day fund for another year, um, you'll see that that will actually drop down um, the required budget quite a bit because we have a lot more periods to get there. Um, but we're going to fix this problem by, uh, by, by shifting our budgets, basically driven by the information in this dashboard. And so again, I, I had this set up a little bit differently last time. Um, but let's just say that our goal here is like uh, $2,200 instead. I'm cheating a little bit here. But let's, so here you can see we need another $100 to get to our goal. So let's go in and use this information to shift our mon money in our uh, savings budget um, so that this has another $100. You can see here that there's about um, $50 uh, extra in this budget versus what we need to hit our, our deadline, our target by our deadline. And here there's almost $100. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take $75 from our sewer repair budget. We'll still be on target, and we're going to take the rest from our rafting budget, and we're going to fund all that money into our rainy day fund. Um, so again, we're going to switch this back. Our adjustment is now going to modify our budget. Um, we are going to take, uh, we're going to add $100 per month to the budget. This guy's on $50 here. When I hit enter, it's going to bump up to $150. Um, from our sewer repair, we're going to reduce this by 75. And again, you can see this is net budget neutral because all of these changes add up um, to, to zero dollars. And now we're going to write this change. Again, I'll use this shortcut here. Um, and now at this point, you can see that everything's funded sufficiently. Um, so we're on track with our goals. The last thing I want to show you here is one issue with these rollovers is that you're basically storing virtual money in these categories but it's important to know if something is done if something's done wrong with your budget that causes basically that money not to exist in the real world so we have a solution for that as well and what we're going to do is we're going to basically say where the money should live what account it should be in when that money accumulates and you don't spend it 
Where, did, where is it? Um, so for the Apple Watch, we're going to say that's in primary checking, rafting trip, primary checking, sewer repair, primary checking. And let's just say we created with our bank a separate account we call Rainy Day Fund and we're keeping it by itself. Um, so we'll put that there. Um, so you can see here an alert came up saying that basically one of our uh, account, one of our one of our uh, accounts does not contain sufficient funds to uh, to fund our goals. So let's use this little query tool up here to check where where we're short. Um, so I can here I can pick an account um, and let's start with the primary checking. Um, and you can see here this is pulling in out of my balance history a balance of forty five hundred dollars. The amount of that uh, in, within that account based on these selections that should be allocated to goals is 2600 So you can see there that that is coming from available here and here. Um, let's change this to some. So effectively, <clears throat> where'd that go? I can't even see it anymore. Well, it's down there. So $2,600. So um, there's $2,600 here that we expect to have in that account, um, but it has more than that. So there's, a, there's actually extra money unallocated. If we look at the other account, the rainy day savings, you can see here that this should have, we expect to have $400 available, but its balance is only $250. So there's a shortfall here. And the fix to this would basically be making a transfer within the bank of $150 from the checking account, which is overfunded to the rainy day, and then everything should be fine. Um, Heather, is there anything I didn't cover that you think uh, you wanted to bring up? No, I think that was great. Really thorough as well. I like the improvements. I haven't seen a lot of these improvements. It's pretty cool because a lot of this feedback came directly from some of our community members. Um, really, just since we released this publicly, like the end of last week, I think, and a lot of minor improvements have been made. So that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, it hasn't been long, and especially Curtis and Mike uh, and Matt have been really helpful in terms of giving us feedback and sometimes uh, providing like new formulas that work better. So yeah. it's been great to collaborate with the community on this. I'm really excited for this too, because I know that folks have been asking for a long time. Um, so we do have one question so far. Let's go ahead and dive in there. And if anybody else has questions, please get those over in the Q&A. We'd be happy to take them. So John asks, what would be the appropriate way to handle and or at least think about a year end bump in salary, a bonus, additional savings? Just add the additional income to December budget and then continue with my savings goals. Does that make sense to you, Randy? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I wonder if you need, um, if it's important that you actually budget for it or if you basically just, uh, I think I think that would make sense to basically just bump to, if, if, it, if the bonus is kind of an annual thing, it might make sense to basically have a budget that runs at like a kind of a steady state until the bonus month and then it bumps up. Um, that 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 does make sense to me. Also, I guess you could um, you could add uh, you could basically just do this um, savings workflow here, where you set this to savings and um, on your paycheck, uh, basically add in you know whatever the bonus is, um, and, and and basically bump bump it there. I think that makes sense too. All right. So then we also have a question from Terry, how do you make the money go to those funds? Do you have to tell the bank to transfer it? Um, I think that uh, the, I think by funds, I think that means to those accounts. Um, the idea with this tool is that uh, is that when you have that income, you saw early on that basically there was more income coming in than expense. And so the assumption there is that maybe through a direct deposit or something like that, your paycheck's coming in and it's accumulating maybe in a savings, or sorry, a checking account or savings account. Um, and the money's going up there and out of that same account, there's money running out to pay credit card bills and, and, and expenses. Um, and so the idea is that the money is, should be accruing wherever those transactions are happening naturally with your bank. What this allows you to do is sort of say, this is the place where it accrues. For most users, I think it will just kind of default to being in their sort of most active checking or savings account. But if you are sort of being more active in 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 saying like every month I move out the, this this budget amount, $150 into a separate account because I want to see it discreetly, then this this tool becomes more useful because you're basically able to say, you know, these five things are in the checking account, but this one uh, or these this handful of other uh, things that I track are basically in these in these discrete accounts. And so this base this tool basically allows you to just sum up all the thing all the uh, 
available money and compare it to the place where you expect it to be? I hope that answers the question. Yeah, one, one thing to follow up, I think, Terry, is that the assumption is that you're not actually spending money in these categories if they're marked as savings and their savings goals that you have set up here until perhaps you do, you know, spend some money from that rainy day fund, then you can use that category for the expense and it will decrease the available that's there. And so, Randy, if you look at the savings budget sheet, you know, the actuals for all of these periods is, is zero. And so it's, you know, the money is basically, as long as you don't spend it, this is assuming that you're saving it. And so that's where that account check on the uh, savings and debt sheet helps you just verify like that money actually exists in some account and it's checking against a real world balance to help make sure that you're not falsely, you know, counting money that's saved and it really wasn't. So hopefully that helps answer your question, Terry. Let us know if not. All right. So Allie asks, my savings budget sheet is showing all of my categories, not just the ones I selected from savings from in the track column on categories. How do I make it only show the categories I want to save for within? Yeah, so the, the, the savings budget is really set up to budget for all of your categories. And as you note, you don't actually, in the category sheet, need to turn on the savings, um, the track savings um, column, which is new for every category. Um, so if you don't track savings on a category, it doesn't mean it won't show up in the savings budget. What it means is that basically if there are is favorability or unfavorability at the end of the period that it doesn't get it doesn't get accumulated um, and one way you can see that is for example like entertainment right now this is tracked and so you can see here um, as the months go by we have eventually a, a negative forty two dollar um, unfavorability if I turn off um, tracking on this savings tracking on this column Basically, we still see the category, but we lose um, the accrual that happened over our entire budget. Um, so yeah, so the, the intent here is really not to sort of just have the savings budget show savings categories. It's basically a complete budget, but the savings setting is basically determining whether it, it, it runs an accrual on that, um, on that category. Heather, is there anything you want to add to that? No, I think it does dovetail into a question um, that Nisha asked in the chat. Why is the income and expense sheet called a savings budget? That doesn't make sense. And so the name savings budget is just a name that we pick because we're, we're building on the concept of having a savings workflow in, in a budgeting worksheet. Um, you know, potentially in the future, it may just be rolled into our foundation template. We haven't decided that that is the fate of the of these workflows yet, um, but it is something that we're considering. And so we just pick savings budget as the name for the budget tab because it's a different version of a, a similar budget. It looks pretty similar to the way the foundation template looks with the exception of like the widgets and stuff that are at the top for cash flow and, you know, spending versus actual and stuff like that. It's it's slightly different, but the rest of the layout is pretty much the same. And so it's just intended to, to try to be clear that like, hey, this budget allows you to track your savings, not only with the savings tracker sheet and setting goals and setting targets, um, but also just track the everyday savings in a particular category if you don't spend all of that money in one month. And so it's kind of, you know, allows for different methods and different workflows all around savings. Hopefully that answers your question, uh, Nisha, as well. Uh, John asks, how do you handle a transaction, which is savings related, but I'm purchasing stock or long-term savings? Do you have any insights on those? I always get stumped on the, the stock investment type questions. Transaction, which is savings related. I mean, I guess in some way, um, in some ways a, a stock purchase is kind of like a transfer because um, it's it's a little bit different than a transfer because uh, you know we use the concept we've long we've used the concept for a long time of the transfer where basically you you transfer um, effectively uh, value to a different account like when you pay off a credit card bill and in this case it's kind of like you're transferring um, you know money into a stock that is holding the value there and then at some point when you sell the stock you transfer the value back it's a little different i guess because the stock can appreciate or not um i, I don't know heather is there anything you want to kind of say on that 
No, t typically with the investment uh, related transactions, we do just recommend using transfers. I don't know that, I mean, we def definitely didn't build any, we didn't put much thought into investment related transactions as far as long-term savings into these tools. So I don't know that they will work like, you know, I don't know that you would set a goal in the savings tracker sheet around investing and allocate any of those um, transfer transactions or sale transactions or any of that to those goals. Um, so I don't know that they're that compatible. And that's not to say they aren't, we just didn't think through it. Um, typically, I just we just recommend folks categorize those as transfers because you get a lot of them. You get a lot of like automated type of sale of stock and dividends and all that stuff. And we just say like, put it as a transfer so it doesn't show up as affecting your cash flow. Um, otherwise, you can use hidden categories like on the category sheet. There's a hide from report column, and you can just mark them as hide if, it, if you want to, you know, sort of be more meticulous about whether or not it is an expense or income kind of thing, but you don't want to see it on your budget because most people don't want to see that stuff showing up in their cash flow on their budget um, in the, the monthly budget in the foundation template. So, all right. So John asks, I guess I'm looking to get a quick monthly net amount after all income expenses transfer are complete. Is there a place for that? I would say um, this budget can do that for you, John. Um, but also, if you're not interested necessarily in those rollovers or those, those this kind of savings column where where um, uh, favorability or unfavorability accrues period over period, you could also just use the the standard foundation template monthly budget or the yearly budget, um, both of which do I think what you're asking for. Here you can see that um, on the monthly budget. Uh, you, you can see your actuals on income, your actuals on expense. You can get net um, net actuals here um, and net and net budgets here as well. Um, and so uh, so I think either of these could serve you well. I think one thing, and maybe Heather could speak to this a little bit more, is that I believe transfers are not shown or sort of accumulated on the monthly budget, Heather. Is that right? Whereas we do currently. Um, allow if if you unhide uh, transfers, they're currently hidden here. You can see I have two transfer categories. If I unhide those here, I believe they'll show up at the bottom of um, of this uh, savings budget. That's right. On the monthly budget and the foundation, they the transfers don't show up intentionally, even if they're hidden or not, because they don't affect your cash flow. Um, and so we just try to keep that budget really that dashboard really focused on. The things that were going to affect your cash flow. Um, if you wanted to look at them and, and see if they net out, there's other solutions available in the Tiller Money Labs add on that as long as they're not hidden, they would show up. Like I think the category tracker, for example, it will, sh it will show you the transfer, any of your transfer categories if they're not marked as hide. And that way you can kind of see if they, um, if they're summing to zero or not. That would be how you could tell if, if the transfers were complete. But a lot of folks use transfers for one side of a transaction and not the other side. And so they don't always net to zero. It really just depends on your preference of how you want to, uh, the workflow you want to use with different categories. And so, um, all right. And then last question here, unless anybody else has others, uh, is from John. Uh, should I consider making a stock purchase transfer in an investment expense? Um, once again, John, it, I mean, it's really up to you and what's going to make the most sense for your reporting and your workflows. That is a way that you can do it. Um, it but just know that if it's, if it's marked as an expense type uh, in the category sheet, that it is going to show up in your budget. And so if you don't want, like if you're using the monthly budget uh, or even the savings budget, you don't want, if you don't want it to show up as a part of your cash flow and your, you know, general monthly expense for your monthly budgeting, then you can either mark it as hide or you can use that transfer workflow, um, having it be a transfer type. So hopefully that helps. All right. Can I say one more thing to that? Sure. I think, uh, John, um, you, you could, instead of calling it an investment expense, another way to do it would just be to call it an investments. Um, and then you could put expense here or oh sorry not there expense here and how this could work for you is when you buy a stock you'll have a negative expense um, but if you sold a stock and then deposit that money into your account you could categorize it the same 
Um, and you'd have a net favorability or unfavorability. So like if you bought something for $100, sold it for $110, you'd have a minus 100 line item and then later a plus 110. And so basically your investment, even though it's listed here as an expense, would have sort of a net um, contribution to your budget of plus 10. Um, if it felt clumsy to call it an expense, because in some cases it would be uh, favorable, you could call it a transfer as well. Um, that might make more sense. Um, the only thing to know is that uh, some users are really want their transfers to, to net out to zero. Um, and so if you're if you're a user like that, this this would probably not be the best solution because um, these wouldn't net to zero. But if you don't care about that, um, that might be a sort of a more um, accurate way to, 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 to do this. And one last one last point is just that um, speaking for myself, sometimes I have trouble answering these questions on the spot, but the community is a really great way to see what other users are, are doing. Um, and also, uh, I think Heather and I can both be a little more thoughtful sometimes about um, our answers w uh, when we are answering and writing in the community than doing it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so we have, a, we have a attendee, Chad, that keeps raising his hand and we don't, we, we don't take like a audio questions. So Chad, if you have a question, please get it over in the Q&A really quickly and we can take it there um, before we wrap up here. John, thanks for your feedback here. He says, nice, great ideas. Thanks. Tiller is one of the best things I've found recently. Super happy so far. You guys rock. Thanks, John. That's really awesome. appreciate that. All right. So Chad, if you have that question, just either get it over into the Q&A or you can reach out in the community and we'll be happy to answer your question there. Anything else from you, Randy? No. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, All yeah, right. Just let us know in the community if you have any follow-up questions. Thanks so much. Look out for that um, survey and we will see you again in a couple weeks. See you, everyone.